Hello there, great person, and welcome back to Let's Read the Wheel. I'm book three, The Dragon Reborn, who is not a lot in the book. But we will go to chapter 48, which is called Following the Craft. And it is a um, Vendasora leaf? Is it called that as a sigil? Three Vendasora leaves. Or leaves, uh, these leaves, whatever. And uh, yeah, so let's see if we are at tier finally or not. Yeah, we're in tier. We're finally in tier. Who is it? Er ah, Egwen. Egwen is in tier now. So the first uh, batch of people we follow has uh, arrived at a tier. Is Rand there already or not? Okay, so Egwen is seasick. Yeah, that's terrible. I was seasick once. That's pretty disgusting to me. Yeah, okay, so they are all vomiting. Okay, so they had a quick ship, but they are all seasick. That's unfortunate. Yeah, okay, okay I think only Elaine is not that, um, not that um, influenced or affected by the, 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 the quick travel. Oh, light, do not think about vomiting. Green fields, meadows, light meadows do not uh, heave like that. Hummingbirds, no, not hummingbirds, larks, larks. Singing. <laughs> Mistress Jocelyn? Yeah. We're talking Mistress Jocelyn? That's cool. Are they gonna immediately get captured or what's gonna happen? Is Leandrin there? Will we meet Leandrin again? Very good, Captain. Yeah, and she thinks about the Terangriel. And Teleranriel still showed her stuff. Okay, let's see what Teleranriel shows Egwin here. Sometimes there had been glimpses of Rand or Matt or Perrin and more in her own dreams without the Terangriel, but nothing of which she could make any sense. The Shonshen who refused, who she refused to think about. Nightmares of a white cloak putting Master Luhan in the middle of a huge toothed trap for bait. Uh, why should Perrin have a falcon on his shoulder and what was important about him choosing between that axe he wore now and a blacksmith's hammer? Killing versus creating, perhaps. What did it mean that Mad was dicing with the Dark One? And why did he keep shouting, I am coming? And why did she think in the dream that he was shouting at her? Ah, oh, Mad is signaling her, yeah, I'm coming. I will rescue you. Mad for the rescue. He's probably gonna like build a freaking nuke and throw it at someone or whatever. I like that. So the, the Mad playing dice with uh, Balsam on here seems to be that it's not that really Mad. There's... To be something different that's like in mad or that's creating this luck or it's the 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 the, the wheel playing against Balsamon, but uh, the symbolism is that the the game mad plays is obviously the game Balsamon plays as well. So yeah, and rent. He had been sneaking through utter darkness towards uh, toward Kalandor, while all around him six men and five women walked. Some hunting him and some ignoring him, and some trying to guide him toward the shining crystal sword, and some trying to stop him from reaching it, appearing not, not to know where he was or only to see him in flashes. Six men, five women, eleven. Plus two, Ag Aginor and Bathamel. That's the thirteen forsaken. That's the third, definitely. So some forsaken want him to find the sword. What is going on with those idiots? Like. <laughs> I mean, I know they're not idiots, but like, what's going on? Why are they all doing something different? So weird. What's going on? One of the men had eyes of flame and he wanted Rand dead with a desperation she could nearly taste. She thought she knew him by Alzaman, but where the other, who were the others? Is Baalzaman one of the 13? Is he himself a forsaken? Is it perhaps that a forsaken found Baalzaman like eons ago and merged with him and that's how Baalzamon came into our world? I, I, I have no clue. Okay, Ren is in a dusty chamber, confronting a horde of Son Shonshen, confronting her and the women with her, and one of them was a Shonshen. It was all too confusing. So there might be a Shonshen that's going to their side in the future somewhere. What is the Black Archer up to? Why don't I dream something about them? Light, why can't I learn to make it do what I want? Perhaps that's not that important. Perhaps the Black Archer is currently not important. Because the ones who want to kill them are not Black Archer. At least it is at, like it's this, this Beldi or whatever it's called, dude. 
and he might control the Black Archer, like he might influence them. Though I think Lanfaro is influencing the Black, Ar Black Archer, so the one who wants her definitely dead is not Black Archer related. That's perhaps why she dreams this, but I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, so now they can go ashore. Yeah, now they, is, like, they, they start to leave the ship. Yeah, and they're happy to be on solid ground again. I can really understand that. After a flight, I always feel like that. Like, I feel very happy to be on ground again. Okay, Tyr is as big as Camden or Tavalon. It's, it's, it's not as beautiful, but it's still great, yeah. Okay, so now we get our first look at the Stone of Tyr. It was the first fortress built after the breaking of the world. Grey Stone Hill. Okay, the banner floating above the, 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 the stone is um, field of half, of half red, half gold, banner waving at least 300 paces above the river. Yeah. And crescent moons. So perhaps some unfair influence, but perhaps not. Okay, it looks like a mountain. That's interesting. Yeah, but I think it also makes sense. Made with the power, Elaine murmured. Blows of earth woven to draw stone from the ground, air to bring it from every corner of the world, and earth and fire to make it all in one piece. One piece? No, no, I'm sorry. Without seam or joint or mortar. At one Sedai says the tower could not do it today. Strange given how the High Lords feel concerning the power now. Yeah, something is weird there. Why hate, do they hate the power so much? This is because of something that happened. Okay. And uh, Nanif's like, yeah, per better not mention this when there are people because they hate us. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so and again. This is this this came up. I have not talked about this a lot because I never really, really thought about it, I think. But Gwen starts to have things like being annoyed that Nynaeve is above her, even though she's not anymore in rank. But she always has this feeling of being like the, the student of Nynaeve, the, the one that the child Nynaeve cared for, whatever, whatever. And here again, she thinks Elaine always agrees with her. Even though she's right, then she corrects herself, but something's brewing there as well. She's right, Kyla. Remember why you are Kyla? She says to Elaine, yeah. Yeah, okay, so now they're starting to ride. And they're a bit afraid because it will, it might remind them of the trip uh, with the ship. Yeah, we need to locate Leandro and the others. That's true. Though that is a trap. What are they going to do about that being a trap? They have not thought about that. Perhaps they'll hope that the creator helps them. Okay, they want to use the thief taker. Okay, okay, so thief takers are normally... Um... Okay, wait, wait, wait. One, one, one more thing. We got more information, I think. The, the, the guards of uh, Tyr are called Tyrion Defenders of the Stone. I mean, yeah. Okay, so a thief taker, someone you can go to and uh, pay them to get the thieves that stole stuff from you, even though they're mainly employed by the royalty. Okay, or whatever high council there is. Okay, okay, okay. So Egwen says we go to an inn, and he's like, not an inn. Why not? Yeah, because people might know her, and they might have uh, like spread information about them already as a trap. I mean to spring their trap in their faces, but not with us inside. Yes, true. Yeah, where are they going now? Yeah. Yeah, Lane's like, I could go into one of the noble houses and say, them, say I'm the daughter heir, but I mean, I think she implies about that, but, uh, that, but I think she says like, yeah, that won't be any good. And the Neve's like, I will, I will know when I see it, where will we go? Okay, so not many people are on the streets. Is that good or bad? I mean, they can't hide in the crowd then. Uh, and from what she saw on the faces of the people around her, few of the people cared to try any longer. 
That reminds me so much of Road to Wigan Pier. It's a good book. It's a book where uh, I think it's by George Orwell. Uh, yeah, it's by George Orwell. It's, yeah, I, I, yeah, I see it in my bookshelf. The book by George Orwell drives through industrialized uh, England and he sees the people suffer like. Like there's, there's a scene and he sees someone on the street and they know they're going to die and die, have miserable lives. And they know that and he sees that in their face and it's horrifying and he just like goes away then. Terrifying. And this reminds me of that a bit. They were moving, working, but most of them had given up. Few as much as glanced at three women riding where everyone else walked. Yeah, this yeah, this reminds me so much of that. I will I will find the passage, I will read it one moment. Yeah, here it is. I'm sorry. It took a while to find it. I mean you won't see it because I'll cut the silence out, but so if you have a version of Wigan Pier, this is the same thing as uh, uh, Gwen says about the people that they've given up. And uh, this is like um, Orwell driving through a city and seeing a woman in the backyard. And he describes her here. And I just want to, because I think this is good literature, I just, wh why not? I'm just going to do it now. And uh, the, the description here is very similar. She looked up as the train passed and I was almost near enough to catch her eye. She had a round pale face, the usual exhausted face of the slum girl who is 25 and looks 40, thanks to miscarriages and drudgery, and it wore, for the second in which I saw it, the most desolate, hopeless expression I have ever seen. It struck me then that we are mistaken when we say that it isn't the same for them as it would be for us and that people bred in the slums can imagine nothing but the slums. But what I saw in her face was not the ignorant suffering of an animal. She knew well enough what was happening to her, understood as well as I did how dreadful a destiny it was to be kneeling there in the bitter cold on the slimmery stones of a slum backyard, poking a, stip, uh, a stick up a foul drain pipe. Yeah, that's exactly that. Like, it's people that... And this reminds me, this this, this passage in, in, in Dragon Reborn reminds me so much of that. I, I can, yeah... I wonder if uh, Jordan read uh, uh, Wigan Pier. Good book, very thought like pro thought provoking book. But and that's it. Like they're in the in the in the poor areas, and I love the description here, that that uh, they know they are effed. All of the poor people know they're effed. It's even a bit like that's a description different from when they were in um, Evangel. Evangel, is it called? Yeah, Evangel. Um, uh, when they were there, the the um, what the refugees? That's what it's called. The the refugees came in, and they were not described like this because they had hope. I think they might have had hope, and Matt gave that woman hope. But yeah, this is so terrifying. Okay, so people wear plat like have platforms uh, on their boots because there is a lot of mud. Okay, so now Nynaeve seems to know where they are about to go or where they should go. Did you not see the herbs in front of the window? Nynaeve knocked again. Herbs? So uh, Nynaeve knocks at the door there. A wisdom, Gwen said. Yeah, might be a good idea. Yeah. Okay, so there's a woman now. What does she want? How can I help you? Yeah, and she sounds like the Emmeline. Yeah, of course she does. I mean, so the Emmeline never lost her accent. Interesting. Which one of you needs me? I do. I need something for a queasy stomach. And perhaps one of my companions does too. That is, if we've come to the right place. Okay, that's a good pretense. You're not Terran. I should have known that by your clothes before you spoke. I am called Mother Gwenna. Okay, hello, Mother Gwenna. I'm called a wise woman too, but I'm old enough not to trust that to cork a seam. Come and I will give you something for your stomach. Thank you, Guan. Bueno. Which tea will you give me? Nanive asked. Chain leaf or blue word? I would if I had any of, uh, any of either. Since I've had no time to glean of late, I will give you a brew of marsh white leaves. I'm not familiar with that. Works as well as chain leaf, but it has a bite to the taste some don't care for. Okay, so is she testing Nynaeve? Is she going to poison her? I don't know. You follow the craft, uh, craft then sit. 
sit and we'll talk. Which one of you has the other stomach? I'm fine, Gwen said. Are you queasy, Kelia? Yeah, no, <laughs> they are not. Not. Yeah, only naive, okay. Drink, girl. You see, I will not hurt you. No, it will not hurt you, yeah. Okay, so she gave it to naive. Tell me, Mother Gwenna, will we have to put up with this rain and mud much longer? I'm not a sea for Gwynferra girl. If I could tell the weather, I'd assume a stick like silver pike down my dress, then admit it. The defenders take this sort of thing for the next uh, for, for next to Ethsedai work, yeah. Yeah, she has to hide a bit. You look as if you have been traveling. Now, do you follow the craft or not? What is good for fatigue? She barked suddenly. Bread with tea on or and delay route. Since you ask questions, what would you do to ease birthing? Mother Gwenna snorted. Apply warm towels, child, and perhaps give her a little white fennel if it is what a, uh, if it is an especially hard birth. Yeah, okay, so they check each other out if they know what they're talking about. Because, like, if she tries to set up Nynaeve, she will not know this, because if she knew, she couldn't set her up, because then she would have been caught before. You know what I mean? What do you give for pains in the heart, the killing kind? How did Gendin blossom on the tongue? If a woman has biting pains in her belly and spits up blood, what do you do? Yeah. Okay, so they just test each other now. Great, have fun, guys. Okay, so Nynaeve is now trying to get new knowledge and the other woman is also trying to get new knowledge. Fine, have fun. It's so funny, yeah, they just tell each other secrets. It's so cool. I will remember that. You mentioned using sheep dying roof for eye pain. I have never heard. A Gwen could stand it no longer. Miriam, do you really believe you'll ever need to know these things again? You are not a wisdom any longer, or have you forgotten? I have not forgotten anything, Nanya said. I remember a time when you were as eager to learn new things as I am. That is true. Ah, wow, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know a Gwen is like stressed and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's okay. But... Interesting that Nanif still wants to learn more. She might also pretend, but I something tells me that she might be honest here as well. Yeah. So they ask her now what to make arguments stop, and she's like, I do have a way to make an argument stop. It is not something I urge anyone to try, but some do come to me. I charge a silver mark for each woman, two for men, because men make more fuss. They are some there are some will buy anything if it costs enough. Yeah, but what is the cure, Elaine asks. Let's let's see. So okay, she, so she tells the people, yeah, take the other person to me. I will I will make them stop, and then he takes them both out and puts them in a barrel. <laughs> so funny. And Anive is like, oh, oh oh oh, I think I may have done something very like that myself. And Anive said in a voice that was much too light. Um, does that mean anything? Yeah, and then he was like, yeah, I'll, I, I, I tell the same, but I will do it for free. And I will use the river. <laughs> okay, so the woman, when uh, likes their company, she might be a dark friend, okay. Okay, she is, now says she's called Ailhuin. Perhaps that's her first name or her real name. Next time we'll talk over some good sea fork tea, yeah. Instead of something that curls your tongue. Yeah. Okay, okay. So now Nanif has like gotten in with her, like she's like, we, there are no scissors, bros, whatever you say. And then uh, now she asks for a room. That's clever. Okay, so she has three empty bedrooms. What a coincidence. Great. The, the wheel cares for them. It wants them all to have an own, their own room. Okay, and she's like, you can have them if... And now what does she want? Okay, I think she understands that they're Asadai. Yeah, she knows they're from Andor. Yeah, why, why are they there? So she wants, she wants to know why. And then the room is theirs. We are chasing after something. Okay, that's not even a lie. Or rather, after some people. They stole some things from my mother, and they did murder. We are here to see justice done. Okay, that's what Elena said, yeah. Burn my soul if you know men folk. <laughs> men are good for that. Okay. 
Those who might have come in our place were killed. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. The three murdered Esedai. If they had not been killed, the Emelin would not have been able to trust them. Yeah, she's trying to keep the bloody three oaths, but she is skirting its close, yeah. I must tell you this, Nanif said. These murderers and thieves are dark friends. They are women, but they are as dangerous as any swordsman, Aluin. If you wondered why we did not seek an inn, that is why. They may know we follow and they may be watching for us. Is Aluin, um, else, uh, no, what's her name? The woman Egwene saw in her dream. No, she would have recognized her. Okay, never mind. Of the four most dangerous folk I know, two are women who never carry as much as a knife, and only one of them, uh, of the men, is a swordsman. As for dark friends, when you are as old as I, you'll learn that false dragons are dangerous, lionfish are dangerous, sharks are dangerous, and sudden storms out of the south. But dark friends are fools. Filthy fools, but fools. Interesting. So Al Aluin is not like very taken aback by that reveal. Perhaps she doesn't fully believe them. The dark one is locked up where the creator put him, and no fetches of thankfulness to scare children will get him out. Boots don't frighten me unless they're working the boat I'm riding. Yeah. Yeah, so Nynaeve wants to collect proof, perhaps, to get a tear on her side, but tears are already controlled, so yeah. Tough luck, sister. Okay, now she's like, yeah, I think you need a man, and I know just the one. Ooh, if you mean a lord, one of the high lords, remember we have no proof. Yeah. No, no, no. She's gonna know someone. Perhaps we know the one she knows, but let's go. Mudfish don't school with silver sides. Yeah, they have a two-class society, even though... Yeah, whatever. Juilin Sunda, thief catcher. Great. Okay, okay. Oh, 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 Elaine just said, Oh, Nanif, you are becoming Esedai. You learn now to manipulate people as well as Moraine does. And Nanif's like, What did you just say to me? You become what you most hate. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. It was a Gwen who said that. Oh, Elaine slapped her. Okay. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Oh, well, okay. I'm sorry that I thought it was Elaine who said that. So it was a Gwen that said that, and Elaine slapped her, and she's like, "Be careful, we have to work together here." Why is Egwen getting so antagonizing? Is it the tear stuff? Is it like the tear vibe that's also like an alien and Andor? I don't know. This is so bad. They're gonna have a fallout. I hope they don't have that. But yeah, I mean, Nynaeve saved her life so many times now. Yeah, we have to do this. Elaine sighted. I went turned back to peer through the window at the horses. I know we do, but I do not have to like it. Yeah. Yeah. It makes some sense into her. I love Elaine. That was probably perhaps a good thing. I don't know. Always hard to say. Anyway, I hope you liked this. If you did, uh, consider liking, subscribing, commenting, all the stuff. And I'll see you tomorrow with the next chapter. So I think it's, what is it left? Seven? Eight, eight, eight chapters left. Eight chapters left. Yeah. Eight chapters left. So, hope you have a great day. I hope you like this. And uh, yeah, please take care of yourself as always. Bye.